I wasn't sure about filming this this week because of all that's going on in the world right now. We're in the middle of the world's largest civil rights movement in history and filming something for my YouTube channel just seemed a little bit insignificant. But if you don't follow me on Instagram or you haven't seen the description to last week's video, you won't have seen that I've pledged to donate all the proceeds from sales of the Vanguard to some Black Lives Matter causes for last week's sales and for this week's. Last week I sold a few van conversion guides which was great but I thought there's probably more of a chance of getting sales and therefore donations if I spoke about it rather than just writing. So if you had any inclination whatsoever of buying the guide, which is £15, now would be a really great time to do so because your purchase will be fully donated. And even if you had no thought to buying the guide, I would still encourage you to donate if you can because I know not everyone is in the position to, but if you are, please do. I've linked some Black Lives Matter causes in the description below, so please take a look at that. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video because I'm trying to get as many sales as possible to donate as much as possible. In this video, we'll be going through soundproofing the van, which is a crucial step that I wouldn't miss out, insulating and vapor burying the van, and what I did on the doors. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The material I used for soundproofing the van was this kind of foam material and it was self-adhesive um, but it was super super heavy and it was really difficult to cut through. I first started out by cleaning the van with rubbing alcohol to make sure that the surface was clean. I then measured the spaces and cut the soundproof material to fit in those spaces. Normally from what I've seen on other blog posts and other YouTube channels what you can do is just um, cover a third of it rather than all of it but I had enough material to cover most of the spaces so I peeled the back off, attached it to the surface and used a roller to make it stick. So I just want to show you the sound difference. So this is it with the, um, with the foam and this is it without. So there is a huge difference. And then I found it easier to actually just measure everything at once and then cut it out at the same time rather than doing it bit by bit. And I attached them all with the roller to make sure that they adhered properly. What you want to do is you want to make sure that it's actually a little bit warm, otherwise it won't adhere properly. So if it's cold where you're doing it, you do need to kind of have a heat source in the van to make the adhesive a bit more sticky. And I also did the same process for the ceiling. Good morning everyone, or good afternoon actually. Um, so today what I'm going to do is work on the insulation because most of the structure is done now. I'm going to start with one wall, just this wall for now, see how it works, see if what I think should work actually works. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Just to let you know what I've done in preparation for the insulation, there were a few holes on the side which I have filled in with silicone and have dried and are completely filled now because when I put the insulation in and everything on top I don't want there to be any chance of condensation or air getting through um, to help the condensation. The insulation I'm using is Lana wool. I'm not sure if that's the Spanish word for it or if it's the English word but it's basically rock fibres so it's really um, fuego proof. <laughs> So it's really fireproof. It is a bit thick, I think it's about 7 or 8 uh, centimetres, so I'm going to have to squeeze it in, which will decrease its insulating properties. However, I couldn't find any other suitable insulation in the stores that I went to. So the insulation that I use actually came with a aluminium kind of backing as a vapour barrier but you'll see later on that I also put an additional vapour barrier on but what I did is the same process as kind of with the soundproofing I measured out the space and then um, cut out the insulation and then squeezed the insulation into the spaces I did this process with the whole van with both of the sides of the wall and um, make sure you wear safety equipment for this because you don't want any of the insulation getting inside your lungs or on your hands or on your face like it would be very unpleasant and uncomfortable. The 
The good thing about doing the structure the way I did is that for some parts it actually helped keep the insulation up and kind of propped it because otherwise I don't know how I actually would have put the insulation in those particular spaces like in the middle that you can see there the insulation is being propped up by the structure. Then for the small hard to reach places I filled them in with either expanding foam or leftover insulation just to make sure that all the cavities were filled and that there was no chance of air getting in and then condensing and um, rotting the insulation. Sometimes the foam expanded a little bit more than I wanted it to, so then I just went over with some scissors and cut off the excess foam. The floor was a little bit easier than the walls, and I also used a different kind of insulation. It was the same rock wall insulation, but it was five centimeters thick, and it didn't have the aluminium backing, um, just because I wanted a thinner insulation on the floor. Now the ceiling was just a hot mess. I didn't make my battens wide enough to prop up the insulation so I had to stick it up. So please make sure your battens are wide enough in order to prop up your insulation. Good afternoon everyone. So today what I'm gonna do is just a little few pieces before I get on to doing the vapor barrier. I wasn't going to put a vapour barrier on the walls but because of the way the insulation is now in the cavities there is still quite a bit of air and gaps left over so I'm going to put some vapour barrier over that. Before vapour barrying though make sure you mark out where your battens are because remember you want to screw stuff into it so you need to know where they end so I did this with green tape. And then to adhere the vapour barrier to the van, I used just normal double sided tape. I taped it along the battens and also along some of the metals to make sure that it stuck properly. And this actually worked really well. Um, another thing you could do is use spray adhesive, but I just decided to go with the double sided tape. My vapor barrier only came in one meter width strips, so I had to um, do it in strips and then adhere them together using aluminium foil tape. And you just wanna go along the seams with your tape to make sure that there are no gaps between the vapor barriers. I did the exact same process for the floors whereby I put the double sided tape along the battens and then rolled the vapour barrier out on top of that. When I was going over the wheel well I actually cut it out as I was going along as you'll see um, because that's just the way I did it. There's probably a better way of doing it but it worked out fine. Then you want to also make sure you tape up the seam between the wall and the floor. For the doors, I basically did the exact same process as with the walls. I bolted on the battens, um, insulated it, and I actually don't have a video of the vapor barrier on top, but I've inserted a picture here where you can see that I just kind of um, adhered the vapor barrier with the aluminium tape and it worked really well. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope it was informative and helpful. The only message I have right now is that if you are in a position to help with the Black Lives Matter movement, whether it be buying the guide to donate, donating separately, sharing stories or posts on your social media, or even just having a talk about the issue of racism to family and friends, you will be participating in the largest civil rights movement in history and standing up against injustice. I'll see you in part four.